your follow-up to the forward tilt, but this is fine. He doesn't even get a follow-up off of that. So, he literally gets a grab and puts you from the corner to off stage. He didn't even get 10%. Like, that segment was really good for you. And then here, you go for ledge jump, fast fall in there. This is fine. I had a second. I had I, If I started buffering shield right away, I could have shielded that. Um, I was trying to correct for the nair because I was trying to hit him with the fast fall nair on reaction to him whiffing. And I was trying to drift towards him and nair. And then I think while I was waiting to react to what happened next, I was still holding drift towards him and it buffered a turnaround. Or I just started buffering turnaround. And because you can see me turn around before that uh, side B hits me. Well, you can shield out of turnaround. Like here, you don't just turn around. You are turning around for like one, three frames. Two, three, four, five. You were four tilted. <laughs> um, that's a forward tilt. Sword? I think so. I th I think that looks like beginning or initial dash, like the very first frame of initial dash to the right. But I, All right. uh, either way, I've, this is an example of me not making a decision and trying to wait, or like this is not in line with the practice because I was waiting to see what happened next before I made a decision. Right. So you had about six frames. Like this was this second up tilt was also fine because he had to go over to the mm -hmm. platform. So this is what I was talking about before, where even when he dodges you, he can't hit you from here. Like, you can do a dash back and forward tilt. So you come over here while forward tilting the spot. And if he tries to hit you, he runs into the forward tilt. Right. And that's after you don't hit him because he successfully air dodges your up tilt. So if he successfully reads you twice, he gets to fight you. That's it. Let me go back here. After this back here, you wanted to back dash. I think you jumped into the nair. I did. I was buffering. Uh, I, I saw my jump squat come out. Yeah. So. You want to be careful about these down airs. Um, I would I, have rather that have been a nair. That was supposed to be nair. That was a, I wrote that on my practice list. That was supposed to be fast fall uh, in nair, but I was trying to drift towards him a little bit. Anyways, I, it, that was a misinput that I put on my practice list. Okay. Yeah, so you waited too long between the fair and the back air. So it still works out because you hit him with back air. But like here, if you just done the short hop back air here, it still would have hit him. But you would have landed here and then gotten out of second back air and gone over here. So in the time that you would have gotten... But by the time you got to your third back air, you would have gotten that third back air, whereas here you would have been in the same place after your second back air. So it works out because it hits him, but just something to consider. Okay. And again, that's on game plan of play faster. Like there, you just put it out there immediately, put it out there immediately. Your second back air caught him because your first, like, <laughs> this was actually him reading your back air, trying to counter hit you after. And he got hit. Like I'm pretty it. sure he starts this falcon kick before you back here, and you still had time. <laughs> no, it was, it was just after. Yeah, so instead of this forward tilt, I wanted to see you just run up and short hop back here. Again, you don't have to hit them off stage. You can just hit this spot. Right. Like, if they're here, like, as long. So assume that they're going to get up and shield and visualize hitting just past this little dark line. And as long as you put a hitbox there, ever, anybody's going to get hit. Like that forward tilt, when we come back. It could have been a back air. I was going to say, look how much further back you could have been to hit him. Like if he didn't get hit, his hurtbox was going to come out over here. So he would have gone all the way past this line. So you're trying to hit him off stage, but you could have forward tilted all the way here where Sephiroth's body is mm -hmm. and still hit him. Which means that you could have actually been under the platform and still hit the same jump. Yeah, noted. And so you're you're moving further than you have to for the same attack, for the same coverage. It's 
so that uh, I got that input where like I'm f tilting towards him, but then it comes out behind me, and I it's I'm trying to remember what that is, or maybe I just whiffed. Maybe I tried to pivot early. Yeah, so here the jab was a misinput. But see how you're still playing fast enough that he can't catch you? Mm -hmm. Because you're just out playing him on speed. Like you whiffed a, two attacks and he hit you on the third. So when he's hitting you, he's hitting you for way less hard than you're hitting him. Because first of all, you don't even care about what he hits you with pretty much. If it doesn't kill you, it's not like... You care about the stage positioning, but he's not going to set you up for juggles or anything. Because he's just going to put you anywhere between here and over here. And this whole space is basically the same thing. So he's not really getting anything out of the percent he's giving you, and he's giving you very little percent, and it's not killing you. Whereas that up B just undid everything he's hit you with on the second stock. Mm -hmm. I just didn't needed like to not fast fall that at all. Yeah, but it's fine that you did because see how you still had enough space here? Now you ran too long. You could have started another short hop back here. Okay. Like here, that's what got you killed is you hesitated again. Like here, you spent more than a second without pressing any buttons. Mm -hmm. So, 41. Yeah, you spent almost two seconds. Okay. It's fine. You don't have to dash grab in there. You could have just back back aired again. Like after the spot dodge, you mm -hmm. could have just back aired. Yep. Yep. Again. Like here, you could have just short hop forward air fast fold. And still gotten that same forward tilt as a way of adding an extra action into your chain. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you go over that again? The What I should have done in that situation? I must not have. Okay, here where you back throwing. Mm -hmm. See how you empty, empty hop over here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you full hop, fast fall over here to get the forward tilt. Mm -hmm. But you could have just short hop fared and fast okay. fell. Forward tilted and still gotten all that forward tilt at the same time. Because of the difference of between full hop and short hop. So. Instead of full hop, short hop fair towards him and then F till after that. Well, how much how much lag is on fair again? Uh, like nine... Okay, well, the difference between short hop fast fall and full hop fast fall is 13 frames. So as long as the fair lag is less, or 13 or less, and here it's at 14, so the your forward tilt would have included a forward air, and the forward tilt would have come out one frame later than it did here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 14 frames, so it's yes. one over that. Yeah, so at the same stream, you back throw him, short hop fair, fast fall, and then forward tilt. And this forward tilt would have come out one frame later. It actually would have hit him instead, but that's just a quirk of timing. Mm -hmm. But the m more tangible thing that you're looking for is you could have doubled up on your attacks for the cost of a frame. What do you think about my, my escape afterwards where like I just dashed back because he caught it with the overshot? Or I don't even know if it was overshot. He just dash attacked my space. He didn't really overshoot. Yeah. So if he's attacking where you're at, so you're here. If he's attacking this spot, then it's not overshooting. Right. So he did overshoot it. 
however he was hitting this spot. So you've established a space. You see how he's not coming over here. Mm -hmm. That means don't get up and down tilt. That means yeah. you can start your you can short start your short hop back here, and he's not going to pressure you because he's all the way over here. Which is why this works. Yeah, if the up air had been a back air, it would have worked. But that's fine because you're going for the up air because you think he's going to try jumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you see that. The Giga Flare is going to come out early. Instead of going for the forward tilt, try and set up a back air. Okay. So the forward tilt is good when the Giga Flare is actually here, but you see how it's going off when he's way all the way down here. Right. So he's going to wait through the whole thing. Yeah, so this is no bueno. Yeah. You could have just back aired. Because you could have back aired the platform, it still would have killed, and then it would have been way less laggy. We're good. Yeah, so here, you went into full hop double jump. Okay, so you see you're below him. So mm -hmm. assume he's going to fast fall up air now and just fall with fall it. Fall with it, yeah. And he would have just drifted right into it and died. Right. But you don't care that he would have drifted into it and died because he would he had to do to dodge that is air dodge and then you just land with the up air and forward tilt his landing. Or he directional air dodged onto a platform and then you start up a back air after you land. So here you slowed down to go for smash attacks. Also, to be clear, the reason this up tilt works is because you're up tilting over here. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to come here, which meant that he was in the spot for up tilt. Like, you're not trying to hit him. You're trying to hit where they're going. Yeah. I. Or that's what I was trying to cover. Yeah. You did a good job. You always do this get up down tilt. You need to mix it up. Practice okay. getting up, rolling in. Getting up, uh, turn around back air. Try getting up, uh, short hopping back. Getting up, forward tilting, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you didn't have to jump in for this. You can, yeah, it's a projectile. I assume you were trying to cover his roll away. Um, I was typing in a note real quick. Wait, or can you show me the sequence again? I have no idea why I went for that. That was really bad. I I guess I was trying to cover his roll away. Well, I, yeah, I think it was just in the op in the interest of immediate decision. Like I had a hunch that he was going to be over there, and I was wrong. Well, you could have done that while using your range. That's right. really what it comes down to: is you're not using your reach. You're trying to Jigglypuff rest people. That was just a good setup on his part. So here you went into directional air dodge in, not neutral air dodge, but that's fine. The more you know. Yeah. So if you'll excuse me a moment, I need to uh, take my food out of the oven. Yeah, you're good.
Okie dokie. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, awesome. So, again, this is what we're looking for here, the speed of decisions. You have that same hesitation. Right at the beginning. Where you're cornering yourself, just put out a back air. So assume they go for their fastest possible opening. So just assume they run across the stage and dash attack you and put out a tipper back air to hit them there. Okay. If you do that, then you will actually set that up so that they can hit themselves on you but if you don't well then they are going to uh, just corner you right off the start of the game that's right. no bueno so that's that's your main issue here gotten a lot better at controlling the space here around the ledge on both sides so good on you or what what made you think that thought like what part about that get up made you feel that way that your opponent is leaving you alone and giving up covering anything other than ledge roll gotcha good yeah so the, the side b was a back here so here this up here cut off him being any form of aggressive and then he retreated so it was fine and again it probably feels like you're getting hit super hard because he hits you with like a 34 damage hit here but in the grand scheme of ultimate that's not a very big combo and then against falcon in particular like that's half of what he should be getting off of a down throw Gotcha. Yeah, where's that down to? It came out fast though, so he wasn't ready. So what's consistently happening here is after you go for four tilts as you short hop back, try an initial dash away and short hop back. Okay, just to get more momentum or more close more distance before I back here specifically because your dash is lower so if they attack your jump then your hurt box probably won't be in the way like here i miss but yeah oh specifically look at this last back here so this next one coming up if you had just short hopped, he would have hit you there. Okay. The extra distance is making the difference. It's also why you see a lot of the Roy's use it. If you ever watch Color Play, it's almost exclusively what he uses. So I would rather you see you going for the up airs here. Like here, you can up air to swap this spot and then fast fall it and still get a kill here. But that is not to say that's not a nice read. So you're using the information he gave you in game one. I don't know what happened in game two. Um, are you sure that wasn't on, or I guess I can look back that that wasn't on reaction to seeing the air dodge come out um, and realizing he had no options. Because I think he jumps and then air dodges. Oh yeah, he has no jump. And then he air dodges. Right, yeah. Or no, I was, was I, yeah, I jump, he air dodges. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So yeah, it was probably on reaction. This is the first frame of your upbeat. However, the hesitation was more so the read I was referring to. Okay. Although, to be fair, you went for that same hesitation in game one, so... The opportunity cost of that not being up here. You just mean because, like, 
that could have been a different option for him to have to think about? Well, first, it would have killed him in game one. And second, it still would have killed him here, even though he's going for a 50-50. Okay. So it's just better coverage. Like, the, it's the difference between betting that you're going to roll a 5 with two dice than betting that you're going to roll a 12 with two dice. One of these numbers is more likely to occur than the other. Okay. I see. So even if everything else is equal, which to be fair, they're not, you rolling the 12 here is a higher value. Uh, you're going to get the fives more often. Gotcha. Also, if it kills, it kills. You don't need to kill harder. I believe the expression is win more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here you triple dash. So everything was going really nicely. There, I wanted to see you just uh, initial dash short hop back here. You would have okay. come out to about here. And then you would have been able to shield after. His nair would have landed right next to you, and you could have grabbed it. Like okay. here, you should have back aired. So a lot of your four tilts, or your run up four tilts, should be back airs. Mm hmm. Unless you're specifically thinking they're just not going to be ready for you. Like, go for a back air here. Again, do that get up down tilt. Like, that's such a habit. You're not looking at anything. You're just choosing to do it. You really want to practice on rotating that. That's one mm -hmm. of the biggest things. It's I'm going to be a takeaway. I'm going to... I wrote down to do, like, a nine option permute... Or, like, the permutation that we talked about for, like, the at the ledge. Um, like, just really focusing on that again. Specifically, just, like, write a circle around get up down tilt. And then add a couple more arrows from get up and then do. And then okay. down tilt is still fine to be there, but add at least two more things to it that right. you can do. Okay. Is that the up air that you were talking about earlier? Uh, kind of. Here you were a little late. Okay. So the idea is you're swinging to hit their feet. So see how you hit his torso there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I was saying you're a little late. You're like literally a, f a few frames late. So you want to hit their feet with that and get the tipper. Mm -hmm. like you're not concerned about killing them. You're concerned about guaranteeing they can't hit you. So even if he tried to fast fall down air there to challenge it, there was no way of him reaching you because you're low. Yeah. Another stock where you're smash attacking. Mm -hmm. You do this a lot versus Nairop. It's me being scared with like a combination of like wanting him to leave me alone. Well, you're specifically trying to use big attacks because you're not comfortable with his retreats. So he's basically, he's camping you out. So he knows you're going to up B in and he's waiting for it. And he's just not a good enough player to get it. And then this should just be the stock. Yeah. So this is a matchup specific thing. So here, you don't want to be in the corner while the town platforms are here. Okay. Against characters like Sheik, uh, Aegis, 
Falcon, et cetera, et cetera, because they have kill combos that only work when the in this specific scenario. Mm -hmm. So there you needed to either stand your ground or just go off stage altogether. And then you can just shark over here until these platforms are gone. And if you see him come up here to try and come up on the platform, then you can just ledge roll over here. And even if he hits you for it, it won't be in a way that he's going to kill you for it. Gotcha. So, uh, even with that knowledge, the which is, is good knowledge, but the uh, I have this problem in general, like across different characters, that can just cover so much space with like a burst, like Falcon, or I guess maybe burst isn't the right word, but like he like can he just ran at me and full hop from like halfway across the stage uh, when I went for the side B. And I felt like his only way to hit me there was to go for that. And I am torn between like always accounting for how far that they can reach and just always being outside of that or trying to like play like the probability game of like, all right, well, if he does this right now, then it beats me retreating side B. But if he does anything else, then we're fine. But then he went for that and like I died for it. Um, but then if I always assume, like if I'm trying to always space outside of it, I have to space like two thirds of the stage distance away from him at all times. Um, if I press anything, does that make sense? Yeah. So you want to kind of go for a mixture there. So you don't want to be outside of it more. So you want to be just inside of it. And then you want to be ready to react to them going for the specific max burst. That you can react to like him full hopping in is something you can react to right like you can always shield that as long as you aren't still doing something it's just that the at that range the only thing i had to to like contest him doing like just about anything was to like side b um and so i guess it would have just smarter to run over there and do nothing um but it but just could have back aired from the like max distance that he was at like we'll go back yeah because i feel like he was so far away from me uh when he started like that movement option or like that burst of speed towards me so here you need to look at where you decided to go for the side b So here, you could have just forward tilted left, short hop to the right, and back aired. And then he went goes over it with his full hop here. So you basically went for the short hop back air, just without the hitbox to accompany it. Okay. Again, you're not trying to hit him. You are trying to make sure he can't hit you. Like here, if that side B had been in there, you could have landed and shielded after. Right. Yeah, I see. Not worth. So, the problem here is that you couldn't fast fall because you were going for a full hop. So, just like I told you, you can go for a short hop fast fall. Fair. In one frame less than you could... Or, sorry, in uh, one frame laggier than if you had just uh, empty full hop fast fall like you did. Mm -hmm. so just like that so for perspective you did a full hot non fast fall here which is the same as a uh, it's just a few frames less than doing an empty short hop fast fall plus an empty full hop fast fall gotcha <laughs> okay. so <laughs> or you can get a full hop land and get your jump squad out Okay. So the issue was the movement option itself was one of the most committal, less react, least reactive things you could have done. Right. Which means that if they do something big and sweeping that you can react to, then all of a sudden you can't, which is why this worked for him. Okay. Now, you decided to do this, like you started jumping when he was over here. Yeah, I decided on that pretty early. 
kind of interesting. So you saw him running over here. Like he, actually, we're going to go back and see if he full hopped before or after you started jumping. It's pretty close. You jumped first. So you decided to full hop away in reaction to him running at you. So this was not him full hopping across the screen. This is you seeing him running across the screen and saying, I've got to jump away. Okay. But I mean, he still had to, like, I, I guess I saw him running, like, from the initial point of, like, seeing him, like, start to run was, like, probably, like, uh, three quarters of the stage away from the, like, right lip. Um, and so it's, like, with his dash forward and then a full hop, like he was able to get to me but if i didn't side b or like choose the most committal option with the least amount of like freedom then i could have i had plenty of time to do something else well think about it this way so if you preemptively forward tilt what is he gonna do uh probably like jump over me okay or jump over the forward tilt all right so realistically speaking sephiroth's forward tilt is frame 14 to 16 what frame is human reaction time plus input delay um like 20 frames yeah so that means your forward tilt has come out swung and it's in the lag which means by the time he decides to full hop over it, you are going to have about 17 frames left in your in your forward tilt lag. So, Captain Falcon's full hop, sorry, Captain Falcon's full hop fast fall is 34 frames. So which yeah. means that you are going to have 17 frames to do something. Yeah. Okay. Which means you have enough time to backdash and get out of the way of whatever he can possibly swing from his full hop. Or you can short hop near and intercept him. Or you can up tilt with a pretty good window for error. What you can't do is you can't up smash. Okay. Because uh, you're still going to be six frames slow. Which means that either he hits you or he moved away and you're now whiffing up smash. So you actually have enough time to whiff forward tilt in neutral and then short hop fair. And if he tries to full hop in to punish your forward tilt, he'll jump into the fair. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So bear in mind, even though it feels like he can do all of these things, he has to plan to do it ahead of time. Which means all you have to do is think about what he's not planning to do ahead of time. Like when you see him retreating and such, you're just covering him trying to attack in. And if he's not attacking you, he's waiting to see what he can react to. And so he's going to try and move around your forward tilt if he sees your forward tilt. In this case, he's going to try and move around your back air. So your question is, well, how is he moving around my back here? Did you have a game plan for how Nyrock responds to what you're doing? Uh, if he jumps over it, then like I would start short hop up airing, like in response to his movement towards me. Well, here's the thing. You're not, or he's he's not just jumping over what you're doing. It's not possible. So what he's doing is he's preemptively jumping. Right. Because that's, that's just part of being human is you have to do things early or you have to do them after the fact. 20 frames after the fact. So the question is, is he just doing shit to do it? In which case you just need to time things based on what he's doing. Or he's trying to respond to things. And we need to find out, well, what exactly is he, mm -hmm. how is he choosing to jump over it? 
Yeah. So here. Like there, he's forward tilting at your side B, right? Yeah. So this is when he decided to forward tilt. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry, Discord made a sound. This is when he decided to forward tilt. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Because he was, he was buffering it. Yeah. So, when you go back here to when his forward tilt starts... So we're going to go back 20 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So he probably did not even react to you having jumped yet. Like he was doing that regardless. Like he was. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, he was he did this because he thought he was going to back air into you, and then he tried to forward tilt your dash back. Or if you shielded it, then he tried to back air you, and then forward tilt what you do out of shield. But the whole point is, is that he, he didn't see you jump and say, oh, I should forward tilt that. That's not what happened. Right. So you are giving your opponent much too crit, mu far too much credit, and you're underestimating how difficult it is to play around what you're doing, which is an issue because it means that you are not seeing the walls that they're basically running around. So if somebody sets down a speed bump in front of you, you either go over it and you're going to have to slow down or you're going to get fucked up. Or you just drive into it and get fucked up. So you need to be ready to be there to fuck them up if they drive over it. And then you also need to be ready to hit them if they slow down and move around it. Yeah, I think the the part where I don't understand the op or like how strong the back air is, is because... I hyper focus on when I whiff it. Like I feel like that me back airing is such high risk because if I whiff it, then I feel like uh like I'm gonna get fucked up. And every time after I play a set, I'm like, damn dude, I whiffed so many back airs and like that is why like a, a significant part of like why I uh like didn't get as many openings or I didn't like hit them as much and I it's not like proportionally that I'm whiffing that many, it's like I'm not even going for that many because I'm scared of whiffing it. So it's fine to whiff the back air. You are never in high risk for back airing. Or almost never, I should say. So if you're not losing your stock directly for something, then it's probably not high risk. Okay. So when is Falcon up smashing you for you whiffing back air? Yeah, probably never. So what you're talking about is it puts you out of position so that you can't respond quickly to the situation after. Yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> hearing you even say that out loud, I'm like, oh, I hate that. I do not like that. <laughs> and you don't, but that's uncomfortable positioning. So you're not comfortable being in a slow character's position. Mm -hmm. So essentially Sephiroth turns into DDD for the next interaction. Right. But DDD players still beat people. Mm -hmm. So the issue here is that you can't handle playing DDD for a situation. Right. 
but the even if they hit you there, you're you don't stay DDD. It's exactly for that situation. No more, no less. Okay. Whether they win or lose, it's only for that one. It's not like where Diddy, where if you hit the banana out of his hand, he turns into bananaless Diddy, and then the situation after, he's still bananaless Diddy. Right. I see what you're saying. So, so that is not high risk, and I can't even call that moderate risk because your character is not fundamentally worse off you just have a very temporary potential for your opponent to take advantage of i think that a large part of the fear is that my understanding of the game when it comes to that moment in time where i am ddd is very very poor uh because i've only played characters that are like pretty fast uh and a lot of the times, like, Sephiroth feels very fast. And in those situations where, like, my options are limited, I, like, freeze up. And I think that's probably a large reason why I'm so uncomfortable against Fox and Sheik and those kinds of characters. And I think maybe learning or trying to understand, like, what... To recognize that situation and, and like, think through it, like, more intelligently rather than just reacting off of, like, how I feel in that moment is probably how I can not be as afraid of whiffing the back hair. Honestly, what I recommend is that you start spending some time playing Donkey Kong. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I used to play Donkey Kong quite a bit. I felt like Donkey Kong was not slow. In the, or like I, I know his disadvantage is bad, I guess. I don't know. It's more... You want to play Donkey Kong and walk around and shield stuff a lot and then deal with the situations. Okay. So, Turtle Kong. Practice Turtle Kong. Yeah, so basically just avoid doing things like dash attack unless it's specifically to punish something. And more so focus on using like your forward tilt. And your up tilt and your shield. Pivot grabs, things like that. Okay. I will practice that. And I'm just like looking for like yeah, I, I guess having to do that is going to make me have to pay attention to what happens after they hit my shield. Is that the is that the goal? Or like uh, there's a few goals. Uh, so there's multiple situations that you're struggling with, in particular, but it forces you to basically look at their their trade offs when they're trying to line up something on your shield, and hit them for it. And then if they're not going to do that to defend, and if you need to, just defend and then relocate after. Okay. So, I am going to take a break to eat my lunch. Okay. The... Did you have any questions before I do? Um, uh, I, ge I guess I'm wondering if there's, like, even more I can do to, like, get comfortable in those situations. Or, like, or it's, it's to, like, recognize the situation. Like, when I need to, like, switch mini games to the, like, okay, now is my opportunity, like, to, like, evaluate these things. Because I feel like a lot of the time I don't, I'm not even really aware of like when I need to like switch to that mode. There probably is. So, to be clear, the situations you struggle with a lot are situations that I don't struggle with at all personally. Okay. And so, I'm I'm not comparing us. But what I am doing is I'm asking myself, well, why do I have these skills and where did I learn them? 
Okay. So, off the top of my head, I know that I actually specifically play slow characters, and so I'm used to being at frame disadvantage and then playing around that. Because the idea is that if your character is 10 frames slower than somebody and somebody does something that is uh, has like 3-4 frame startup and is minus 6, then I wait for them to do the unsafe thing. And then they can still hit me if I try to hit them after. But if I wait for the second unsafe thing, then I know that I can hit them. I gotcha. And so saying that is not enough. You need to intuitively grasp it. And I think it's going to be something that you need to experience for yourself. Okay. I guess, or like the part that I'm struggling with is like it, that feels like counterintuitive to the like play faster mindset. Cause I feel like to implement some of those things, I guess that's something I can practice not in while not making like super fast decision making, like I can practice that with DK, but then keep up playing fast or keep doing, making fast decisions with Sephiroth. Right. Okay. I see. It's similar to how you parry things and or can parry things and go for an immediate short hop back here instead of trying to hit them. Mm -hmm. It's the concept of recognizing that the situation is frame based. So whether or not you have a true punish or not. Like if you parry something Sheik does, you don't have time to attack her all the time. But if you do parry something she does, then she's almost always going to try and go for the fastest thing that she can in response. Right. Which means that if you look at the picture before, you even parry and recognize, oh, hey, she's definitely going to mash jab after this, and then you just shield after that, then you're going to have Sheik jabbing on your shield. Right. I and see. that is a high risk because you can up smash that out of shield. I see. Okay. I just need more practice record or like thinking about situations in that way. You want to try and chunk or pair things. So try and see both what is coming and then what they're going to do immediately after that. And try and focus punish the second part not the first okay so when you see falcon coming coming at you over here you're not trying to hit his fort or uh, hit his back air, you're trying to hit his fourth tilt right so if you put out a back air to hit right here and hit his leg when he forward tilts then you're going to hit that and then if he goes for a back air and a back dash then he's over here so then you don't hit each other but you're fine with that I see. Okay. So we're so good on that. After I, after I eat my lunch, I will message you and ask if it's okay to call you back, and then we can go over the Gumby stuff. Cool. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Cool, man. Bye. Enjoy your lunch.